Tawheed, A Life Worth Living by Dr. M. Nazir Khan. What is it that makes my life worth living? Some people have the luxury of approaching this question as a mere philosophical exercise, for others, this question continues to haunt them, driving them to the depths of depression. Is life really just the pursuit of transient pleasures and accumulating material wealth? What happens then when life becomes filled with challenges and hardships? Why bother continuing with such a life? In this video, we explore a unique perspective that logically connects our spiritual journey with the reality of existence. What constitutes a meaningful and prosperous life? Undoubtedly, this is a question that has plagued the minds of philosophers, scholars, and laymen alike throughout the course of human history. Some have questioned whether there should be any purpose at all. After all, if the universe is nothing more than shifting gooey soup of particles, the existence of worlds, organisms, and you is purely incidental and ultimately meaningless. Your existence really does not matter at all, and you just have to live with that, as the nihilists preached. The Islamic message, however, presents something very different. The Quran is very direct in confronting the question of meaning. Do you really think that we created you without purpose, and you would not return to us? Quran 23 115 So what is the purpose of life in Islam? The Quran articulates a vision of humanity's purpose that merges moral, spiritual, and intellectual dimensions. Human beings were created to develop their relationship with the one true God, Quran 51 56, but this spiritual journey is also tied to the moral duty to enjoin good and forbid wrong. Quran 3 104. It is a very comprehensive and very persuasive worldview, and it all begins with Tawheed. What is Tawheed? Monotheism is not simply a theoretical doctrine in Islam. Belief in God is not like believing Earth is the third planet from the Sun, or that the molecular composition of water is H2O. Rather, the Islamic concept of God's oneness, known in Arabic as Tawheed, acts as paradigm for viewing life with meaning, and serves as a transformative force in every aspect of life. Tawheed entails that God alone is the priority in one's life, the ultimate aim of one's striving, devotion, obedience, and adoration, that, he alone is worthy of worship, and there is nothing comparable to his divine majesty and power. That is Allah, your Lord, there is no deity except him, the creator of all things, so worship him. And he is the guardian of all things. Quran 6 102 Tawheed can be simply divided into two components, with separate questions tied to each. 1. Tawheed al-Marufa walithbat, meaning, Tawheed of knowledge and affirmation. Who is God? What are his divine names and attributes? How has he described himself in his revelation, and what does he want us to know about him? 2. Tawheed al kast wal talab, meaning, Tawheed of devotion and seeking. How do I come closer to God? What does he want from me? How can I live my life according to his divine guidance? The two categories are fundamentally connected. Everything that a person learns about God, guides him or her towards the right course of action to take in life. When you learn that God is the most merciful, and most compassionate, you are motivated to show mercy and compassion to others, to get a deeper understanding of what it means to show mercy and compassion. Once you do, you come closer to God in a very profound way. When you learn that God is most generous, you are motivated to show gratitude towards God, and increase in generosity towards others. When you learn that God is the most just, you appreciate the value of striving to establish justice. The famous scholar of Islamic theology and spiritual psychology, Imam Ibn al-Qayyim, wrote, God loves his names and attributes, and he loves to the consequences of his attributes, and their manifestations upon the servants. Just as he is beautiful, so he loves beauty, as he is most forgiving, he loves forgiveness, as he is most generous, he loves generosity, as he is all-knowing, he loves the people of knowledge. So because God loves those who emulate his attributes, he is with them according to how much of these qualities they reflect, and this is a special and unique type of companionship. Therefore, establishing Tawheed plays a fundamental psychological role in motivating the human being to undergo moral development and strive to maximize one's potential as a vehicle of God's divine mercy to others. The Journey of Journeys Being a human being on this planet, evidently presents us with multiple opportunities, of which one can choose to take advantage, or simply ignore. 
On one hand, there is the intellectual journey, there is so much about the world, and ourselves, which we can analyze, explore, discover, and learn about. There is no obvious empirical reason why the world should be comprehensible, or lend itself to our explanatory endeavors, but that's the way things are, and there is a tremendous amount we can learn. Secondly, there is the moral journey of bettering ourselves as human beings, and becoming kinder, more compassionate, more generous, more just, more honest, and more loving in the way we interact with those around us. Again, there is no obvious empirical reason why we should develop those traits, but the presence of this opportunity in the lives of human beings is indisputable. Thirdly, there is the spiritual journey, which is the natural human craving for purpose, meaning, value and worth, which remains entirely inexplicable to the materialist or nihilist paradigm. Any philosophy of life, or ideology, or religion, must sufficiently render these aspects of human life meaningful, and unify the intellectual, moral, and spiritual domains. If a person hasn't found such a way of life, he or she continues to search until one is found. What does Islam teach about these fundamental dimensions of human life? These three dimensions of human life, spiritual, intellectual, and moral, were conferred on the father of all human beings, Prophet Adam, peace be upon him. Ibn al qayyim cites the following story as an evidence in his work Radaytul Muhibin. Some of the people of knowledge have said, when God placed Adam to the earth, he sent Jibreel with three things, deen, spirituality, kuluk, morality, and akl, intellect, and he said, Allah has given you the choice between these three. Adam responded, O Jibreel, I have not seen anything better than these except in Jannah. He then extended his hand and took the intellect for himself, and he told the others to ascend back up. They responded, We have been commanded to be with the intellect, wherever it goes. So all three came to Adam. Thereafter, Ibn al qayyim comments that, These three traits bestowed upon humanity, are the noblest traits, with which God has honored any of his creation. In order for them to develop however, there must be opposing forces and thus, in opposition to these three Adamic qualities, intellect, morals, spirituality, God has made worldly desires, which compromises one's commitment to faith slash spirituality, satanic whisperings which compromises one's commitment to morality, and the dark tendencies of one's psyche, which compromises one's commitment to rationality slash intellectuality. Islam is the only path that provides a fully integrated system of guidance that can successfully account for all these three dimensions of human life. Islam does this as follows. 1. The intellectual journey. This is the concept of ILM, knowledge, in the Quran. There are over 750 verses of the Quran, which call upon the human being to engage in rational contemplation, investigation, intellectual analysis, and sincere reflection. The Quran presents all knowledge as two fundamental types, Ayat al quraniya signs of God in revelation, and Ayat al kaniya signs of God in nature. The human consciousness fundamentally serves an interpretative role in seeking, meaning in the external reality of the cosmos, and the revealed reality of divine scripture. In this sense, the entire scientific enterprise acquires sacred significance as a hermeneutics of the ayat of nature. The more one becomes knowledgeable of nature and scripture, the more cognizant one becomes of the divine reality. Do you not see that God sends down rain from the sky, and we produce thereby fruits of varying colors? And in the mountains are tracts, white and red of varying shades, and some intensely black. And among people and moving creatures, and grazing livestock are various colors similarly. Only those reverently fear God, from among his servants, who have true knowledge. Indeed, God is exalted in might and forgiving. Quran 35 27-28 2. The Moral Journey This is the concept of bare, righteousness, in the Quran. The Islamic message is necessarily aimed at cultivating moral development in individuals and community, as the Prophet Muhammad said. I have only been sent to perfect the traits of moral character. A person's faith in God must manifest itself in one's moral behavior towards others. If a person fails to do this, they have failed to actualize the Islamic message. The Prophet said, A servant does not achieve the reality of faith, until one loves for all humanity the same goodness, which one loves for oneself. The famous Islamic polymath Ibn Taymiyyah stated, The entire religion revolves around two foundations, sincerity to God, and mercy to his creation.
3. The spiritual journey This is the concept of Tekwe, consciousness of God, in the Quran. The Quran summarizes the entire message of Prophet Muhammad as one of spiritual purification, Quran 2 151. Purifying the soul entails the elimination of traits, which are hindrances on the path towards God, and the cultivation of traits, which bring the heart closer to God. To this end, a person must explore one's own phenomenology, and scrutinize one's thoughts, ideas, emotions, and aspirations, thereby aiming to remedy any diseases of the heart. Arrogance is a spiritual disease, which can divert one from God, and undermine moral and intellectual pursuits, Quran 7 146. The goal of all human experiences in life is to purify one's heart, and meet God on the final day with a pure, and clean heart, Quran 26 87-89. Tawheed blends, spiritual, moral, and intellectual, the spiritual goal of coming closer to God entails, the moral goal doing good towards his creation, and the intellectual goal of analyzing the signs of God, in scripture, and nature.